Nintendo Wii's conceptual origin dates back as early as 2001, shortly after the release of the Nintendo GameCube. Early patents show that the motion control concept for the Wii was originally planned as an add-on before becoming the GameCube's console successor. After taking third place in sales for the sixth generation of home consoles, Nintendo were concerned that too many powerful gaming systems competing directly with one another could not coexist, so Nintendo opted to appeal to a wider demographic by seeking to appeal to a consumer base beyond that of teenage to adult males. This strategy would pay off in the short run, with the Wii selling over 100 million units in its lifetime and becoming one of the highest selling consoles of all time. However, many members of the core gaming audience were frustrated by the Wii's lack of hardware power and quickly became disenchanted by the limitations of the motion controls, leading many gamers to write the Wii off as an underpowered bowling simulator for retirement homes. While it is true that the Wii is considerably less powerful than the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, with technical specifications landing somewhere between one and a half to two times the power of the GameCube, the Wii is much more capable than it is currently popular to think and is home to some of the greatest gaming titles of any console generation. Though the Wii is roughly equivalent to the original Xbox in terms of hardware performance, this is not to say that the Wii was incapable of running games that are still stunningly beautiful to this day. In order to show how proper coding and art design can make up for hardware limitations, I thought it might be fun to take a look at the top 5 best looking games on the Nintendo Wii. These titles are not selected solely on how far they push the Wii's hardware, but are also chosen based on their art design, overall aesthetic appeal, and of course, my own personal opinion. With that being said, let's get to it. Well, I, I guess you got a point there. Sometimes you have to look at things from different angles. Now, may I? Xenoblade Chronicles has a storyline with one of the strongest first acts that I've ever experienced in an RPG. A game noted for breathing new life into JRPGs, the narrative of Xenoblade Chronicles takes place upon the corpses of two colossal titans locked in an eternal conflict while standing in the midst of an expansive ocean. The inhabitants living on the surface of these gigantic monoliths continue this ancient struggle by engaging in perpetual warfare with one another. Developed by Monolith Soft, the details of its release are as unusual as the game itself. Originally announced at E3 2009, under the name Monado, the beginning of the world, it would see a release in Japan in June of 2010, with its current title. After more than a year following this release, Xenoblade Chronicles would finally be confirmed for Europe, but not for North America. Desperate to see this game released in this region, a fan campaign dubbed Operation Rainfall commenced, consisting of massive amounts of emails and pre-orders in an attempt to raise awareness for Xenoblade Chronicles X and other RPGs not yet confirmed for release. Though Nintendo of America claims the fan campaign did not influence their decision in this matter, they were nevertheless aware of the Operation Rainfall project, and Xenoblade Chronicles was finally approved for an American release. Praised almost universally with a near-perfect critical reception, Xenoblade Chronicles was actually faulted most for its graphics, which were not up to the standard of polish that the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 were capable of. Personally, I feel that the visuals of Xenoblade Chronicles are among its greatest strengths. As its unique and captivating setting in an open world on the surface of two gods makes for some of the most breathtaking and immersive atmospheres to ever grace an action RPG. What the? Wow! Shot's pretty awesome! Next up is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. People have fairly polarized opinions about this title, as it was perhaps overly praised by critics for the simple fact that it was a new mainline Zelda title. The backlash on the internet towards Skyward Sword was severe, with many notable internet personalities pointing out the flaws in the motion controls and tired game design as reasons why it did not deserve the perfect scores it had received from many video game review outlets. This created another bandwagon effect, and now it is popular to consider Skyward Sword as one of the most mediocre games in the series. In my opinion, 
This entry in the franchise is neither great, nor is it a poor or mediocre game. Skyward Sword is actually quite a good game, with interesting, although limited motion controls, and a couple of questionable boss designs. From a visual standpoint, this Zelda title is one of the most amazing looking games on the Wii console. The art style seems as though the timeless, cel-shaded colors of the Wind Waker were placed over the more realistic designs of the Twilight Princess. The characters and environments channel the ornate elegance of impressionistic artists like Paul Cezanne. No matter your personal opinion of the game itself, one thing that must be admitted is that The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is simply a beautiful game. Speaking of divisive games, number three on my list is a title that I have mixed feelings for. Metroid Other M has a unique development story as chief Metroid designer Yoshio Sakamoto opted to approach Team Ninja for help in designing a Metroid game with the flashy action-oriented gameplay of a Ninja Gaiden title. The goal was to depart from the first-person interpretation of the Metroid Prime games by bringing the experience of 2D-style Metroid action into 3D space. Many players blamed Team Ninja for the contrived plot and clumsy portrayal of main protagonist Samus Aran, but Yosuke Hayashi later explained that Sakamoto himself had written the story. Storytelling and character treatment aside, Other M's gameplay is excellent. Team Ninja succeeded in making the third-person platforming and combat as ostentatious as a Ninja Gaiden game, without having to sacrifice on minimalistic controls and intuitive gameplay. In fact, Other M's controls are restricted to a single Wii Remote, without ever expanding to incorporate the use of a nunchuck. D-Rockets, a team whose specialty is in CG animation, were responsible for ensuring that the in-game visuals of Other M looked just as good as the game's cutscenes. This was a tall order, especially considering the hardware limitations of the Wii, but D-Rockets did a phenomenal job with this. If they did not succeed in making the in-game graphics look as good as the cutscenes, they came incredibly close to it. Metroid Other M's visuals and gameplay are so good that I can overlook the overwrought dialogue of the story and almost forgive the less than compelling monologues of the Metroid franchise's leading lady. The runner-up is actually a tie between Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. The Super Mario Galaxy games did not only reinvent a genre and challenge our notions of what a 3D platformer could be, they did so twice. Super Mario Galaxy 2, as Miyamoto noted, can be compared to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask in that while both games utilize the same engines of their respective predecessors, they both built upon their foundations in fantastic and unexpected ways. Visually, I had to put these games at number two because, while outdoing the in-game graphics of any other 3D Wii title, the cartoony visuals and cosmic setting act as the cherry on top of a masterclass in platforming that, in my opinion, has yet to be approached by any other game. Not only do the Mario Galaxy games push the potential of the Wii in terms of controls with seamless pointer and motion elements, they also push the Wii hardware to its limits with advanced mapping and lighting techniques that appeared next-gen even when compared to games on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 represent video games at their absolute finest, and they were able to do so on a console as limited as the Nintendo Wii. Taking the top spot on the list is none other than Muramasa the Demon Blade. You might be a bit shocked that I would pick a 2D title as the best looking Wii game when other entries clearly demonstrate that the Wii is fully capable of making beautiful 3D style games. 
Let me start by explaining that the developers of Muramasa, Vanillaware, are famous for embracing 2D style games for their ability to serve as a platform for unique artistic designs and action-oriented gameplay. The positive publicity received by Vanillaware for this is well deserved, as creating sprite-based style games in an industry dominated by 3D graphics is a risk purely motivated by artistic vision. Vanillaware was founded by members of Atlas, who helped create Princess Crown for the Sega Saturn in 1997. They are also famous for creating Odin Sphere, which was considered a spiritual successor to Princess Crown. Since Muramasa was originally conceived during the development of Odin Sphere for the PlayStation 2, it can be thought of as Princess Crown 3. This is because Odin Sphere was considered to be an evolution of the Princess Crown narrative in a Shakespearean setting, while Muramasa represents an entry in this genre with evolved gameplay elements in the style of Kabuki Theater. Vanillaware specifically chose to develop this project for the Wii because it was the closest to the PlayStation 2 in respect to its technical specifications. Muramasa, then, can be thought of as a sort of ninja princess crown, with vertical scrolling elements designed to promote exploration for the player, a concept that had to be abandoned when working on the original Odin Sphere. Set in the Isle of Honshu during the Genroku period, itself a part of the Edo period, Muramasa's art style lends itself to creating an authentic atmosphere from its brush-stroke technique calligraphy to cultural details right down to traditional clothing, architecture, and food of the era. Every frame of this game is a work of art that begs the player to scrutinize the amount of care that was invested in order to create an immersive experience with a sense of authenticity and realism. Whenever I play this game, I am compelled to stop and drink in the rich artistic detail. To me, Muramasa is the best looking game on the Wii because it managed to utilize the hardware limitations of the system to produce a unique game whose visuals are some of the most memorable not only for the Wii, but for any game of the seventh console generation. <laughs> That's it for my top 5 best looking games on the Nintendo Wii. I hope you enjoyed the video. Keep in mind that this is all based on my own subjective opinion, and if one of your best looking games for the Wii did not make my list, like Monster Hunter Tri for example, just let me know in the comment section below because I would love to hear from you. With that, I will bring this video to a close, but before I do, I just want to say that I hope everybody has a great day, and as always, be safe and take care.